Mr. Speaker, in September, I rose in this honorable house to provide an update on the cannabis regime being developed for St. Lucia. At that time, Mr. Speaker, I indicated to this honorable house that I would be coming in a few weeks to this August chamber to present legislation geared at creating a regulatory body which shall have responsibility for cannabis and other regimes. Mr. Speaker, today I rise as promised to present to this Honorable House the Regulated Substances Bill. The purpose of the bill, Mr. Speaker, is to establish the Regulated Substances Authority, Regulated Substances Tribunal, Regulated Substances Fund to provide for the licenses of regulated substances and enforcement matters. Mr. Speaker, I am convinced that this bill before us will impact our country. I am certain that the level, the purpose, Mr. Speaker, is to provide solutions, a level of certainty that an adequate mechanism is being created to ensure that people will be safe, that our people will have avenue to benefit from modern advances and opportunities that our society and economy will benefit from a robust regulatory structure. Mr. Mr. Speaker, since the manifesto promise of the St. Lucia Labour Party, we have shown an intent not only to remove the archaic and draconian criminal provisions concerning cannabis, but to establish a legal framework allowing for the cultivation, sale, and use of cannabis in St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, what we, like many others in the public, initially perceived as a rather simple undertaking has been a thought-provoking and arduous problem-solving mission, necessitating that we be cautious and meticulous, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we initially believed that a single cannabis bill and cannabis authority would provide a suitable legal and regulatory framework for this industry. However, with time, review, technical advice, introspection, we have decided that broader change was necessary at this pivotal time in our development. We had to broaden our outlook, broaden our scope, broaden our approach. Cannabis was not the only substance which required a revised regulatory framework. And therefore, it was prudent for our development not to regulate, grow, and structure cannabis in silos. Hence the justification for the regulatory substance authority and for the bill that is before us. Mr. Speaker, the enactment of that legislation spells not only another pivotal achievement in the process of cannabis reform, but will address the need for the creation of a regulatory authority which will bring other regimes and products into a space of regulatory conformity. Mr. Speaker, the Regulatory Substances Bill creates and provides the legal parameters for a statutory body which will bear that name and will be charged with the regulations and oversight of several regulatory substances, including cannabis and cannabis products. Mr. Speaker, part one of the Regulatory Substance Bill establishes the authority and a board which shall oversee the affairs of the authority. Part two of the bill provides a requirement for license, processes for application, parameters for approval, and other similar matters, 
while part three of the bill establishes a tribunal allowing for persons aggrieved to seek review and redress. A regulatory substances fund is created in part four of the bill. This fund is established with the oversight of a separate board ensuring the funds generated by the authority and the substances which it regulates will be used as specified in clause 77 of the bill. As specified in that clause, Mr. Speaker, the purpose of the fund is to facilitate the operations of the regulated substances authority. And for specific matters relating to regulated substances or other matters, Mr. Speaker, we anticipate that the funds generated by the Regulated Substances Authority will finance its operation within the first three years of establishment. And as a result, Mr. Speaker, beyond this initial startup period, the authority should be self-sufficient. The funds generated, Mr. Speaker, will also be used to perform critical functions under Section 6 relating to regulated substances, and that includes one, review of policies and guidelines, two, specific scientific research and development, three, development and implementation in collaboration with ministries, departments, or agencies, a, comprehensive public education and training programs to raise public awareness, especially for high-risk groups. Mr. Speaker, this is extremely important for us, especially for our youth and for students. As we move towards a cannabis industry, we definitely need public awareness to ensure that we ring fence that cannabis from our school children and our young people. Also, in this section, we provide for social, emotional, and mental support programs for persons dealing with a regulated substance. And thirdly, we focus on procedures for the safe storage and disposal of regulated substances, to name a few. The objective, Mr. Speaker, is to ensure that the revenue derived from the regulated industry will be applied to the benefit of these industries. By way of example, funds raised from cannabis should be used and benefit that aspect of the industry. Part five of the bill, Mr. Speaker, speak to the enforcement of the provision of this bill and duly empowers authorized persons to ensure that provision of the bill of, are being adhered to. While part six of the bill speaks to confidentiality and oath of secrecy, Mr. Speaker, and that is included in section 90. Mr. Speaker, I have made mention of regulated substances, but so far have only spoken about cannabis. Clause four of the bill allows the minister, by order published in the Gazette, to declare a substance to be a regulated substance thereby placing it and its regulations within the remit of the authority. Mr. Speaker, as I speak, the Office of the Attorney General's Chambers is at an advanced stage in the development of legislation for two substances which we expect the Regulated Substances Authority to regulate and assume responsibility for in the very near future. The cannabis bill, Mr. Speaker, is expected to be presented before this Honorable House within the coming months. Mr. Speaker, the draft of the cannabis bill, like this regulatory substance bill, have received widespread stakeholder discussion, and this will continue even after the passage of this bill. Mr. Speaker, I want to pause a moment and to present to this Honorable House some of the stakeholders and individuals that have assisted in the development 
of the regulatory substance bill as well as working on the cannabis bill. And I want to recognize two of those persons sitting in the gallery today, and that is Mr. English, who's a legal officer in the Ministry of Commerce, and my dear friend, Pancho. Mr. Speaker, these two gentlemen have worked among Madam others. Minister, could you mention the second name? I think it was drowned out by the applause. Say that. The second name for the record. <laughs> for the record. Oh, the second one. Was the, Mr. Dick, Andre DeCaris. <laughs> Elias Pan Pancho. <laughs> Elias Pancho. I think the whole world knows him as Pancho. But, Mr. Mr. Speaker, we, it's, for the records, I would like to mention all the persons that have brought us where we are this far. And we have the Cannabis Commission under the auspices of Invest St. Lucia. And there we have special mention of Ms. Venetia Thomas and uh, Mr. Michael Gordon, King's Council. Within the Ministry of Health, we have the chief, the CMO, the Chief Drug Inspector and Director and Deputy Director of the Substance Abuse Secretariat. We have members of the Medical and Dental Association. Um, we have the Ministry of Agriculture and the staff of the National Agriculture Diagnostic Lab. Um, and we also have the National Forensic Lab. We have the Director and staff of the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, the Ministry of External Affairs, the Ministry of Justice, special mention to the staff of the Legislative Drafting Units, the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, the Ministry of Tourism, the St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Authority, Event St. Lucia, the Ministry of Finance, the Bankers Association, the individual banks, the Cannabis Task Force, comprising representatives of the Ayanola Council for the Advancement of Rastafari, the Inland Revenue Department, Invest St. Lucia, Bureau of Standards, the Ministry of Commerce, the Ministry of Agriculture, the Cannabis Movement of St. Lucia, and the Recording Secretary, um, Ms. Renata D'Souza. We have the Transnational Institution, the government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the International Atomic Energy Agency, the IAEA, the government of Canada, the CARICOM Secretariat, the Canada Expert Deployment Mechanism, and I want to recognize the consultant, uh, Mrs. Trombetti, as well as our local consultant, Mr. Felix Finiste. Other consultants, Ms. Heda Azizi and Mrs. Lydia Ephraim. All other interesting persons who have taken part in the various stakeholder um, discussions that we've had. And Mr. Speaker, the staff of the Ministry of Commerce, uh, Ms. Rosemary Pierre Liu has just left us, and I want to recognize the work that was done by the Honorable Member for Suazel Saltibus when he was the Minister. <laughs> On this side, we do what we have to do properly. <laughs> um, also, Ms. Tricia Sipal Edward. Mr. Paul Francis, um, our, the Permanent Secretary, Sophia Alfie Henry, um, I've mentioned Pancho, Mr. Inglis, and others. So, Mr. Speaker, this whole list, the Attorney General, looking at the back there, and the staff of the AG's office. Mr. Speaker, the list would give one an indication of the number of hours in deliberating to try to bring this industry together. Mr. Speaker, nuclear and radiation sources from the subject of, form the subject of another bill under development. 
which will similarly be presented before this honorable house in the coming months. That bill, Mr. Speaker, currently being referred to as the Radiation Safety and Security of Radioactive Sources Bill, will address our international obligations to regulate and protect St. Lucia against the threats and risks associated with nuclear material and radioactive sources. Mr. Speaker, there is also an intention to revise the current legislative regime for alcohol, petroleum, and other toxic <coughs> chemicals. All of these substances suffer from the archaic and inadequate regulatory framework, which this administration recognizes a need to address. As such, Mr. Speaker, committees respective to each substance have begun the process of review of these industries to ensure the development of modern laws which the Regulated Substances Authority is expected to oversee. Mr. Speaker, this government fully intends to continue to engage relevant stakeholders and the general public in the development of the legislation of all the substances which will be regulated by this authority. Mr. Speaker, St. Lucia's attempt at regulation in this context is different. But different, Mr. Speaker, need always, not always be seen as negative. As servants of the people, the regulatory substance authority and framework developed is, to our mind, part of an informed, robust, modern, and bespoke approach to, to legislation. Mr. Speaker, as I indicated in September, our work is far from complete, but our energy, determination, and passion to till what we believe is fertile soil will not fail and will yield much fruit in due season. We remain resolute in our promise to develop not just a robust cannabis industry, but a broader mechanism for regulating substances in our fair Helen. Mr. Speaker, I present this bill for the consideration and approval of this honorable house. Thank you.